all right y'all we're back and today i'm gonna be trying to start up a new little off-season series that i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna call it the three for 30 uh because a this series is gonna be an excuse for me to basically just talk about each team where they're at what their off-season is gonna hold for them this year and i'm just gonna go over three main points uh three points that i find the most interesting for what each team is about to do Anyway, to get into it, um, I'm going to be going through reverse order, which will start us with the Warriors, and <laughs> unfortunately, the Warriors are one of the teams that will not have as much going on this offseason. Uh, they don't have any impending free agents. Pretty much their entire roster is already on contract for next year. They do have the number two pick in the draft coming up, so they'll have at least one new addition so since the warriors did finish in last place for the year uh albeit with some many injuries and just other factors leading into it that i'm going to get into we're starting with the warriors uh so let's just get right into it so the first point that i want to talk about for the warriors today is their health obviously um we saw clay thompson in last year's nba finals go down with a torn acl he missed the entire uh season after that Steph Curry had the wrist injury that made him miss a, a large majority of this year's season. And then the only healthy players were pretty much just Draymond and then a bunch of new signees and other players who were not on this Warriors roster um, prior to this or prior to last year. Um, uh, because of that, I think even though the Warriors did finish last this year, I think this could have definitely benefited them in a way. Um, you know, even especially now in hindsight with the pandemic and all the craziness that's gone on in the NBA, it might have been, I mean, if you're going to take any year to basically just take the year off and, you know, take a gap year and maybe find some younger talent that could fill your bench roles, this was the year to do it. And I think the Warriors took full advantage of that. You know, we saw guys like Damian Lee, Michael Mulder, Kai Bowman, Jordan Poole, they got extended minutes, Eric Pascal, who was, uh, made an all-rookie team. All those guys were able to get some big minutes, not even have to worry about Curry or Clay, you know, taking their shots or filling their roles or taking up their playing time. <clears throat> so I think it's going to definitely work in their favor going into next year. They're going to get their star players back. Star players back. They're going to have you know, their bench pretty much figured, maybe not figured out, but they'll have a better idea of who to play, when to play, all that, all that good stuff for rotations. So second point for the Golden State offseason is what are they going to do with that number two pick? If you're a Warriors fan, you're probably ecstatic that you're going to have the second choice at whoever you want in this upcoming draft. And although it's definitely been noted by many draft scouts and experts that there are not a lot of you know, superstar potential, not a lot of superstar potential in this draft class. It's not top heavy by any means, but it is deep. There are plenty of players who can easily come onto a team and start making an impact right away. And that's the type of player that the Warriors are probably gonna look for at that second pick. I'm talking guys like Isaac Okoro, Devin Vassell, you know, guys like that who don't necessarily have that superstar potential but they have the tools and the abilities to come on right away and be a plus defender and good enough on the offensive end that they can carve out some minutes early on and help their team win. And I, I, was, uh, I was very intrigued to see what the Warriors would do with the second pick. I thought for sure that they were gonna try and trade for uh, maybe a different star, pair him or pair the pick with Wiggins to go looking for a better you know, third star to fit with Curry and Clay. But uh, after hearing a lot of reports, since the draft class is so non-top heavy, that uh, trading back or trading out of a top spot, which the Warriors have, is has become increasingly difficult as there aren't many teams that are willing to give up, uh, you know, valuable pieces in order to move into that second drafting spot. So unfortunately for the Warriors, they're probably not going to be able to get the most value out of the second pick, but. Again, fortunately for them, they are going to have their choice to bring on a great player who I would assume the Warriors are a smart drafting team. They'll pick someone who can immediately come on and help them get back to the championship. As we know, Curry and Clay they are getting up there in age a little bit. They are still dominant players, but you want to bring on some youth, help them out, you know, get them to that next, get them back to that championship level, and you know, hope for the best. And then finally, my third point that I want to talk about for the Golden State Warriors offseason is 
if the case happens that they do end up keeping Andrew Wiggins, um, you know, I think this could be a breakout year of sorts for him. I, statistically wise, it definitely won't be because he is going to be playing with Curry and Clay, who are known to you know, get buckets at will. But maybe this is exactly what Andrew Wiggins needs. He's been the number one or number two option in Minnesota for his entire career, uh, playing alongside Cat, who is just another you know, offensive gifted offensively gifted player much like Curry and Clay but now Andrew Wiggins I mean he he could step on that court for Golden State and score eight points a game and I bet the Warriors will be fine with that because they'll have Curry and Clay getting around you know 50 60 points a night but <clears throat> I think that this will be good for Wiggins because it'll help him focus on other portions of his game like playmaking his defense we all know that Wiggins has shown signs in the past that he can be a plus defender. Um, uh, I know we all remember that one famous play from uh, either his rookie or sophomore year where he had that one great possession on James Harden's you know, step backs and crazy crossovers. But since then, it's been all downhill. Um, I know in previous years, Wiggins has been stabbed out as one of the worst uh, defenders analytically. And <clears throat> it just, you know, yeah, he definitely has the tools. He's shown us the tools to be a good plus defender. It's just a matter of him, you know, maybe getting into the right system, learning where to be, when to be on defense, and you know, improving from there. And again, playing with Curry and Clay, they just those two make the other players on the team around them better. Uh, I see this being no different for Wiggins. I could see him growing as a playmaker, being able to find Curry and Clay off screens, or you know, just being able to drive and isolate like Wiggins does but then learning to you know dish it out to Curry and Clay for their open looks all in all I think it'll be great for Wiggins career and it could be great for the Warriors too if he can be a you know efficient third star or even for later in his career if he ends up leaving the Warriors to you know once his contract is up maybe he can go get another big contract from Another team, overall, uh, it might take some time, especially uh, if the start of the next season is delayed like it's being said it's going to be. Uh, we don't know. Adam Silver has already said that you know Christmas is the earliest date. Uh, I think Woj or Kevin O'Connor, one of those guys, has said that they see it more as being like a February-March start to the 2020-21 season. And... You know, while it will be good for the Warriors to get some more rest for this time, they also didn't play in the bubble, so they haven't played NBA-level basketball for even longer than you know, the other contending teams in the league. So uh, be ready for the Warriors to maybe take a month or two to get back into a rhythm once the next season starts. Also, it's a newer group of guys uh, around their core of Clay, uh, Curry, and Draymond. So chemistry is going to need to mesh too over some time but by the end of the season next year uh, I'm fully expecting the Warriors to be back in the mix be a top team in the west and make some noise again before it's too late and like I said at the start of the video I'm going to be uh, making one of these types of videos three for 30 for each and every team uh, again I'm going to be going in reverse order of the standings that's why we start with the Warriors today uh, and if you enjoyed you know, like and subscribe, or if you have any comments for me, leave them down below. Any questions, any concerns, leave it down below. And thank you.